So today we're going to talk about Aristotle's philosophy of mind. So Aristotle, remember, was the student of Plato, but he had a radically different idea. Let's cover what his key idea is. He thought that the soul, which is the main part of kind of the self, is really the uh, the form of the body. So the term form here is Aristotle's understanding of the form. That is, it is the kind of shape and singularity and function of the body. Aristotle himself, remember, was an empiricist. So he thought that you only see things through the senses. So you know through the senses. That's really important because when we understand Aristotle, as opposed to Plato, Aristotle is really saying here that I'm only going to see what I believe what I see. And what I see are physical things. So I can only really believe in that kind of physical performance. Now, he does have another level, the mind, and we'll talk about that as we go on. Um, but the fundamental idea is that the soul is just the form or the performance of the body. Remember, the form is one of the four causes here. The form is this one. It's the essentially the shape and the unity of the thing. What separates the chair from the other things in the room? Well, it's form. What make, gives the chair its shape? Well, it's form. Um, the soul is the form of the body. So the idea is that it is the actuality of the body. If the body were dead, then it wouldn't be alive. It wouldn't have a soul, because soul really means alive. If the body's moving around and talking and saying, oh, hello, then, then it is actualized. It has the form of the soul. Whereas the mind is the intellect. Now, this is different to the soul for Aristotle. For a lot of people, the terms soul and mind, well, they're basically interchangeable. But for Aristotle, not so much. For Aristotle, the mind is this kind of essentially non-physical thing. But it isn't um, particular to you. That's one of the really important things to understand. The intellect, the mind, is just rationality, and everybody's got the same rationality, which they can they can work on uh, and kind of actualize more or less. The body is where you get everything else, like your characteristics and your inclinations and so on. That's all in the body. That's the soul. The mind is this kind of abstract, rational self. So that's why I'm calling this the three layers of life. I know, a lot just appeared on the screen. I'm sorry about that. I can't help it. Um, I like drawing big things. Um, the three layers of life, um, they are the three layers that Aristotle thinks exist. Um, and he's basing this based upon you know, his observations of the world. He says a whole range of things have this kind of vegetative state. Now, the vegetative state is essentially just being alive. It is pretty much just Mrs. Gren, if you remember that from GCSE biology. Um, it's things like growth and so on. And, and everything has that, be that plants or animals or people. The next layer up is the appetitive. Notice here the, uh, the, uh, the, the plants and so on have dropped off, but we still have animals and people. This, the appetitive, is the other part of the soul. It is, as the word suggests, although you may not have heard the word appetitive before, you have heard appetite. Ooh. Sorry. So an appetite 
is a desire for something or a desire against other things. This is where your characteristics come in. Now, Aristotle, being an empiricist, remember, doesn't really see plants and so on as having characteristics, but animals do have characteristics. Oh, sorry. Something's going on with my pen over here. That's a little bit worrying. There we go. We're back. Okay, so those are the first kind of two layers there. They then are kind of separated from this third and final layer, which is the level of the mind. The level of the mind, we have instead this kind of universal intelligence. Essentially just the application of logic. And it's non-physical, right, because it, it accesses the actuality, the, the final cause of the universe, and the final cause is also non-physical. But it's, it's also universal for a very particular reason. It's universal because logic is the same everywhere. Now, here's an important thing I want you to understand before we go into a little bit more detail on the difference between the mind and the soul for Aristotle. The thing I want you to understand is that some things have all the different kinds of soul and the mind, like humans do, and other things just have a bit. So plants, for instance, well, they just have the vegetative soul. Whereas animals, animals have the vegetative soul and the appetitive soul. And then humans have the vegetative soul, the appetitive soul, and the mind. Does that make sense? I don't know why I'm waiting for you to respond. I can't hear you. Okay, let's talk about what they actually are, though, because this is the mind over here, and this is the soul. The soul is a kind of set of data, a set, sorry, a set of behaviours. Uh, that identify just that thing. Um, they are kind of uh, actions, and they are the form of the body. And this is what Aristotle knows through experience, through looking at the world. Whereas the mind, Aristotle says this. He says... The case of the mind is different. It seems to be an independent substance. So it's different from the soul. It seems to be an independent substance implanted within the soul. So it's in the body uh, and to be incapable of being destroyed. It's radically different then to the body. The body doesn't survive death, whereas the mind does. The mind is universal. Now, unlike the substance dualists, uh, like Plato and Descartes, he doesn't think that you are your mind. He rather thinks that mind is just this kind of academic logic application. And that's why when we get to the concept of the afterlife, there's a very, very different view. For him, there is no afterlife. Because you are your body. Your body dies. And that's it. You're done. The mind is universal and not really you. The mind is not really you. Although obviously it is incapable of being destroyed, it's not you. Oh, that is a very interesting why. It is not you as a person. So that's Aristotle's philosophy of mind. He thinks that the soul is the form of the body and the mind is the intellect. 